In this video, we are reviewing Unit 9 from Latin for Americans. In this unit, we'll learn different variations of the third declension. The first variation that we're going to learn is third declension, neuter nouns. So these will be very similar to the difference between second declension, masculine, and second declension, neuter. We will see an A in the nominative and accusative plural. When declining neuter endings, it's important to remember a few things. First of all, you have to remember the neuter law. And the neuter law is that the nominative and the accusative of all neuter nouns, pronouns, and adjectives are the same. Notice here, when you're declining the neuter, corpus, your base is corpor, and then it goes corpori, and then again, because of the neuter law, your nominatives and accusatives have to match up. But then your base goes back to your genitive singular, corpore, and then corpora, corporum, corporibus, corpora, corporibus. So the only things you really need to remember is nominative and accusative are the same. Change your base back when you do the ablative singular and have an A in the nominative and accusative plurals instead of an ES. Another variation of the third declension are called I stems. So the big difference with an I stem is the genitive plural is, is IUM instead of UM. But other than that, there's not really a big difference. There are rules to how you form masculine and feminine I stems. Those aren't really so important, just as long as you can recognize what I stems are. So the first rule is for masculine and feminine, if the nominative ends in IS or ES and has the same number of syllables as the genitive singular, like kiwis, kiwis, nawis, nawis, westus, westus. The second rule is that they are, for masculine and feminine, is that they could be monosyllables with a base ending in two consonants. So example, mons, montis is an I stem. And the last rule is for neuters. So if a neuter ends in AL, AR, or E in the nominative singular, it will be an I stem, like mare and animal. Qus qus is an I stem for the masculine and feminine. Notice that the genitive singular is IUM. There's sometimes a couple variations for I stems. The ablative singular can be an I. Occasionally, this happens a lot with nawis. And the accusative plural can be IS as well. But if you stick with the basic ES and E, you should be OK. For the neuters, you actually only know one neuter, and that's mare. We'll learn animal later. But mare goes mare, maris, mari. And because of the neuter law, the nominative and the accusative are the exact same. And then the ablative singular is always an I, so that's another change. And then it goes Maria, so I-A, then Ium, Ibus, and then I-A again because of the neuter law. Nominative and accusatives are always the same. And then Maribus. So third declension adjectives can be a little bit tricky. They decline like I stems, except for there's always an I in the ablative singular for all three genders. And we'll talk a little bit more about them. When you do adjectives, or decline adjectives, remember they agree with the noun they modify in case, number, and gender. So that's very important to remember. Case, number, and gender, not declension or ending. And so now that we're dealing with third declension adjectives, it makes noun adjective agreement a little bit trickier. Third declension adjectives come in three varieties. And the variety depends on how many different nominative singulars there are. Here's an example of the most typical third declension adjective, the one with two nominative singulars. So the two nominative singulars is fortis for the masculine and feminine, and then the forte. And then after this, this will decline like a regular I stem. So in the ma it's masculine and feminine, it's just is, I, am, and then remember, ablative singulars always have an I in both all genders. Ies, and then ium, since there's an I stem. Ibus, es, ibus. And then for the neuter, it goes is, I, and then an E, just because the neuter law for an all neuter nouns, pronouns, and adjectives, nominatives and accusatives are the same. I in the ablative singular. And just like mare, it's ia, ium, ibus, ia, ibus. Here's an example of a third declension adjective that just has one unique nominative singular. Notice how we have par for the masculine and feminine is the same as par for the neuter. And it just declines the same. Paris, pari, parem, pari, because that I in the ablative singular. Then ace, ium, ibus, ace, ibus. 
neuter is ace, I, and then neuter law, nominatives and accusatives are the same. Then we have I in the ablative singular. Then it's ia, ium, ibus, ia, ibus. The ablative of respect is used to show in what respect an adjective, noun, or verb is true. When you do this, you use the ablative without a preposition. So, for example, Telemachus was equal to his father in respects to courage. See, this is the word tute without a preposition. However, not in respects to authority. Octoritate. You are fixed in your opinions. So, in respect to your opinions. This would be tuis and tentias. Notice no preposition. The Abu case was really a combination of three cases, and that's why there's so many different uses. When we talk about ablatives used with a preposition, we don't really need a special name for it, but there's a few that we do have. So for example, the ablative agent is generally ob when it's with a person or ablative, and so, so it cannot be translated as usual sense from, and this is just with a passive verb. We have a special name for cum because it's the ablative accompaniment, distinguish it from the ablative of means because they're both translated as with in English. You have to pay particular attention to ablatives without a preposition, because their translations depends on the analysis of what type of ablative is used. So we talked about ablative of means, ablative of respect, ablative of manner, and so you have to watch out for what type of ablative is being used. Now we're dealing with nouns. Now nouns you have to pay particular attention which declension it belongs to. Is it first? Is it second? Or is it third? And then what type of third is it? Is it third masculine feminine, third neuter, third eye stem, third eye stem neuter? So I'll go through the third masculine feminine. So octor, octoritas, caleritas, kiwitas, clamor, libertas, orador, pastor, Pater, Uxor, Wirtus are all are all masculine feminine third declension. Now do we have to look for third neuters like Caput, Carmen, Corpus, Flumen, Use, Nomen, Wolnus and Tempus. Be careful with these guys, especially with Wolnus and Tempus, because they look like second declension masculine, but these are third neuters. Same with Corpus. I also missed Iter as third declension masculine feminine. Now our eye stems. M masculine feminine. Kiwis, Venus, Hostess, Mons, Nawis, Westus. So notice how the is, 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 is. And so you can start seeing that pattern for an I stem. You don't have to memorize the rules, but you just have to know which words are. And then montis is mons, mont, and it's, is its base. It's monosyllabic, ending in two consonants. And then lastly, we have mare, which is the only neuter I stem that you guys will know. Now we have to learn about third declension adjectives and the three types of families that it belongs. So we have ones that have three unique nominative singulars. So that's keller, kelleris, kellere. So that's a masculine, feminine, and a neuter. And then we have those that have two nominative singulars. Focalis, familiaris, familiare, fortis, forte, omnis, omne. Where this is both the masculine and feminine. They share endings. And this would be the neuter. And then par, paris where par is both the nominative singular for the masculine, feminine, and the neuter, and the is is the genitive singular. Now our verbs, we first we look for our, for our eos, so respondio is a second declension, and then we look for our ios, there are no fourths, but yakio and conficio are third io, and then we have to distinguish our first, second, and thirds. So, tendo, pelo, and clado are all third. 
and then Confirmo and Supero are first. And lastly, we have our adverbs, postia, which is afterwards, and our preposition post plus the accusative, which means after.